ay, 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 of hand a shout of praise as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord Galatians chapter 3 and in verse 13 and 14 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us for it is written Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Someone say a loud amen. Speaking on the subject breaking and destroying limiting curses breaking and destroying limiting curses our objective is to, is to understand the liberating power of God first understanding the liberating power of God and second to understand those forces that guarantee our liberty under God. Understanding the liberating power of God. Understanding those forces that guarantee our liberty under God. Father, do what only you can do tonight. Let no one person be unfortunate enough to go back the same way they have come. You are no respecter of persons. Please change somebody's story. Someone here, the Lord is saying to you, what the, your father wished he achieved before he died, he cried, he lamented that he could not achieve. You will achieve and exceed it. That word is not for everybody, so not everybody is expected to say amen. The only person it is meant for is the one that will say a louder amen. What your father wished he achieved, that he lamented that he could not achieve, he wept. You will not only achieve it, you shall exceed it. There's someone else here. The barrier they have erected for people from your community. Where they say nobody from here can cross here. You will not only cross it, you will tear it down. The meaning of that is after you have crossed it, others will cross it with you. You will be a pioneer, a groundbreaker, a frontliner, a history maker. After you have crossed it, others will cross it with you. 
you believe that shout the loudest amen somebody here the lord said everyone who said we will see what you will become after this night they will begin to look for your help some of them you will send their children to school out of the mercy of god 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 you believe that shout the loudest amen somebody here in a short time to come if Jesus tarries when you write one and you put nine zeros behind it the check will clear God is taking you to a realm, a financial power realm, as a kingdom financial apostle that will shock you and shock your community. Shout the loudest, Amen. Take your seat and hear this. Tonight is a night of very drastic turnaround. God is a God. Who is committed to the liberation of his people? He is the God who is eternally committed to the liberation and liberty of his people. He was the one who told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. Also, God is the God in whose presence captivity does not survive captivities can survive captivities can survive he said for the lord is that spirit in second corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 17 where the spirit of the lord is or where the lord who is the spirit is there is liberty tonight is somebody's liberty night don't feel obligated to say amen if it doesn't pertain to you but for someone tonight is your liberty night where i have come from what holds people back was unable to hold me whether family, whether territory, whether locality, whether region. And I am the sons that the Lord has given to me. We are for signs and for wonders. Anything that holds people back in your family. And holds people back in your community. And holds people back in your territory. Whether it's spiritually, maritally, financially or career wise. It will never be able to hold you back. Your case shall be an exception. Shout the loudest. Amen. I am going to show you scriptures. Take your seat. Because in the course of the ministration, there may be uh, difficulty in sitting down at some points. I will show you scriptures that shows the commitment of God to the liberation of his people. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 13. He said, I am the Lord your God. <laughs> I brought you out first, out of the land of Egypt. Everyone who has been in any form of captivity, hey, tonight is the night when you are coming out of that Egypt. The day that darkness will overpower light will never come. The day that the devil will be more powerful than God will never come. The day that the demons will be more powerful than the angels will never come.
everything that has kept you in any form of Egypt or Egyptish. Tonight you are coming out. I brought you out of Egypt that you should not be their bondmen. I have broken the backs that held you down and made you to go upright. That is, there were forces that forced your face to be down. You may be walking upright physically, but in the realm of the spirit, you are down like that. Because there is a band that says you shouldn't go up. Like that woman in Acts, Luke chapter 13, that was bent double. Where Jesus said, woman thou art loosed. She could never, the Bible says she could in no wise lift herself. She had done everything clockwise, rightwise, leftwise, frontwise, backwise, upwise, no wise. Until the day power jammed power. He said, you have looked down and you have been bent down for too long. Now you shall stand upright. I announce today, every force that prostrated you, that said you should not walk upright spiritually, walk upright maritally, walk upright financially, I am anointed to announce tonight that force is broken. Man, shut up. That's right. Something is happening already here. That you should not look upright. You shouldn't walk upright. That your life should be crooked. You shouldn't be straight. That your life should not be normal. That the, you shouldn't see the beauty of life and the beauty of the sun. That you should just remain double bent like that. Who is he that said it and it come to pass? When the Lord commanded it on. I have seen people bent like that for 30 something years. Straighten. That's physical healing. Here in this place. Bent like this. I'm sure you saw some of it before. Crusades around the world. As it has happened in the physical, it shall happen in the spiritual. Anything that has bent you down, bent your marriage down, bent your finances, even your children, and said their life should not be straight. I am speaking to somebody right now. Your child is a concern. Their character is a concern. Their academic journey has been a concern. I am here to announce today that yoke is broken. And they shall, that's right, that's right. Something is happening here. Something is you are here, nothing has been straight in your life. Everything has been crooked and bent. I am announcing by the authority of God, it is straightening up right now. They are straightening up right now. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Made you to go upright in Isaiah chapter 10. And in verse 27, he says, in that day, and today is that day, that his burden, the burden of the Assyria, shall be taken away from off your shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That man who testified about diving into the water and bringing out the dead body, and the habal is threatening him and then he got paralyzed. How many of you still remember him? That thing happened about the year of 2017. And he had been, eh? 19. And he has been paralyzed till, until four months ago. Just now, people have sent us messages from Kaduna and everywhere that they know him. As they watch the testimony on television. The one who sang... Kane sent a message to he said she was in the church in Kaduna when he saw his case. And other people have sent messages that that story was true. 
Habali is threatening me, paralyze him on the spot. Until four months ago, when fire jammed fire, when power jammed power, when oil jammed oil, hey! Lita kabagalayadada. Iteke patalayadada haya. Hear this. Anything they have done to tie your life down. Anything they have done to tie your destiny down. To tie your physical life. Your marital life. Your financial life. Your career life down. Today they are untied. 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 His body shall be lifted from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anything that has been a burden in your life, you remember it, it weighs you down. Everything that has been a burden in your life, that is a yoke on your destiny. Today, the burden is lifted. And the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. There is a woman in our church. I'm, I'm sure she may be watching this service now. If you are watching, please let me know. Um, she should be in Maraba one branch. It will be like 22 years, 20, 20 to 22 years ago. I was preaching in a night like this. The subject was the Lion of Judah. He said the lion, and, I, and in the middle of the night, I said, the lion of Judah is roaring now. And when the lion roars, every beast of the field takes cover. This woman had a, a baby girl in Lagos with her mother, seven-year-old baby, that was totally paralyzed. So paralyzed that she had, she was urinating without control and, and all of that, and they had to use pampas. Seven-year-old, she was in Abuja, mother was in Lagos with the baby. I said the lion of the lion roars and all the animals of the of the forest takes they take cover in the middle of the night a man wearing white walked to the baby in her bedroom where she was lying down and he said baby stand up and walk she looked at the man who is this baby stand up and walk baby stood up Paralyzed, we win on herself, urinating on herself. Baby stood up and began to walk, and the man disappeared. That was the lion of Judah. He appeared in person. Tonight, the same lion of Judah shall roar, and every beast of the forest shall take cover. Hello? She went back to sleep. In the morning, she woke up and went to the kitchen to meet grandma who normally would come and pick her from the bed. Grandma saw her. Her immediate response was to faint first. <laughs> she fainted first. It was when she regained herself that she told the story. That was the second time we saw somebody fainting because of a miracle. We came for projector outreach in those days. Our blazers here were still in area one on Lugwe Road here, around one of those fields there. Did projector, and then they were showing people lifting up their crutch and walking. A young man who had matured man, but he became deaf about 15 years before. He was talking and hearing before, suddenly became deaf. He looked at the miracle, so he saw crutches lifted, saw everything. He went back to the house. It's of the other religion. He said, Baba, come and see what I'm seeing. Hey. Baba fainted. <laughs> when, because by the time what he was watching, open his ears. Baba, come and see what I'm seeing. Baba, who is talking? He fainted first. When he recovered from the faintness, you see, I say, Baba, come and see what I'm saying. He fainted twice. <laughs> hey! Masha, take a pack at...
everything that has been a burden in your life a concern in your life that has put your life under pressure put your family under pressure tonight that burden shall be lifted that miracle that will make people to see you and faint literally is about to happen to you right now if you are a believer shout the loudest amen take your seat doesn't that show you that God is committed to the liberty of his people in that day his burden shall be lifted from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed now Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 29 Jeremiah 31 and in verse 29 he said in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth has quigelized. In those days they shall say no more. The father ate grape that was not ripe and the children's teeth began to react. But, verse 30, everyone shall die for his own iniquity. The man who eat the sour grape, it is his teeth that shall be set on it. Anybody who transacted with the devil should bear the consequences. Am I speaking to somebody here? Anybody who negotiated with the devil should bear the consequences. I cannot suffer for what my forefathers did. I can't. I cannot suffer for what my great grandfather did. I can't suffer for what my great grandmother did. I can't suffer from for what my ancestors did. I am not the one who did it. If the devil is looking for who to hold, he should meet them in their graves, dig up their graves, and continue his transactions with them. I stand there by the mantle of, of God on my life and by the light of this revelation. Everything transferred from your father's house, from ancestral transactions that is trying to affect your destiny today. The yoke is broken. Do you understand that? That was what made me to scream. I owe the devil. No. My grandfather did, dealt in slave trade. And so what? My forefather was a witch native doctor. And so what? Your great great grandfather killed person. Are you the one who killed the person? They shed innocent blood. Did you shed anybody's blood? That was why the Bible said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us as it is written. Curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. I announce tonight in the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ the resurrected Lord. Every obligation the devil is demanding from you because of your forefathers or ancestors. Today it is nullified. I want you to make up your mind. Make up your mind brutally. Make up your mind aggressively. Make up your mind and let the devil know. I am not the one you, you, you transacted with. I am not the one you negotiated with. I am not the one you, de you dealt with. In any case, my forefather didn't go to church. I am in church. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I blast in tongues. What limited him cannot limit me. What limited them cannot limit me. Somebody shout the loudest say amen. If they tell you you are going to end the way your father ended or the way people in your family are ending, tell them you don't know who you are talking to. 
You don't know who you are talking to. The Bible said, our citizenship is in heaven. From whence we look from the Lord to come. Colossians, our citizenship, our communication is in heaven. The American ambassador in Nigeria is not a Nigerian. He lives here but is not of here. When they say exchange rate is increasing, he's not aware. He's not paid in this currency. Nothing reduces in his life. He is rated based on his country's rating. The people walking in their Is it homeland or what was it called there? They are not any, in fact, it's any more than them by being on a mission. That's how your life is. When you arrived, when you arrived in Abia State, you arrived as an ambassador. You don't belong to Abia State. It was only a port of arrival. Don't belong, you don't belong there. What happens to people there can't happen. You, what kill people before their time can't kill you. Yes, sir. Because what is determining your destiny is from another realm. Yes, All your relations who don't know God are from another country. Somebody say it loud, amen. I like you to take it right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, I shall not reproduce, shall not reproduce the, failures the failures of my generation, the failures of my father's house, the failures of my family. I shall not reproduce generational failure in my life in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat one minute. I told you it's going to get so hot. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 to 21. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what come this to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head. But these carpenters have come to scatter them, to free them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. This came to scatter them. There are forces called the horns of the Gentiles that make people not to lift their hair. But there are also counter forces that are called the carpenters of God. The assignment is to scatter scatterers. Hey! My, yeah, 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 yeah. Is to scatter scatterers. Kill killers. Punish punishers. Destroy destroyers. Anything they came to do in your life, the assignment is to do it for them, to give it to them. Hear me? In the name of Jesus, every, every horn of the Gentile, every, every power of hell that came to scatter Nigeria, we declare the carpenters of God shall scatter them. Every power of hell that wants to scatter your family, scatter your destiny, scatter your community. I announce today the carpenters of God shall scatter them. If they shall scatter them, they shall scatter them. Shout the loudest, Amen. Let us rush. 
We read Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 already. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 already. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict you. I will save her that halted. I will gather her that was driven out. Any land where they put them to shame, I will give them fame there. And I will get them praise. I will allocate for them praise. Allocate for them fame where they have been put to shame. You know, God is the greatest poet. Fame and shame. I will replace your shame with fame. I will replace your adversity with advancement. I will replace obscurity with notoriety. He said, anything that is limiting your destiny he will use the hammer to undo it somebody say a loud amen somebody say the loudest amen I announce to you tonight by the time God is through with you today the same area the same community the same sphere where you have been put to shame in that same realm you will see fame somebody say amen somebody say a louder amen somebody say the loud most amen number chapter 23 verse 23 said Surely, there is no enchantment, no witchcraft against Jacob, against Paul. Neither is there any divination against the house of Paul and Enche. Call your name. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What has God done? No, no divination, no enchantment. Micah chapter 5 verse 12. Micah 5 12. He said, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand. And you shall have no more soothsayers. Any witchcraft that has affected the work of your hands. Hey! Any witchcraft that has affected. You say I will cut off witchcraft from your hand. Any witchcraft that has affected the fruit of your womb any witchcraft that has affected your destiny any witchcraft that has affected or is affecting the plan and purpose for of god for your life today they are cut off i said they are cut off i said they are cut off if you are saying amen let it roar like thunder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to this. Everything called an ancestral or a generational curse that will not leave you alone. Tonight is their death. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. During normal healing and deliverance services, people come, they get free, they get liberated from demonic attacks without qualms. Now, this service has been named for breaking and destroying of limiting causes. There is no option. You must be free. The real you is imagined after tonight. The real you, hey, shut up. The real you, help that young man there. The real you, the real you, the anointing.
anointed you the full potential of you is emerging after tonight shout yes Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Now listen. What are the forces of liberation? What are the forces of liberation? Number one. Being born again. Being genuinely saved. And staying away from sin. Being genuinely saved and staying away from sin. That was what Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 said to us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for it is written. Curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Through Jesus Christ. We have the guarantee of liberty. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. It says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins he delivered us from the kingdom of darkness he translated us it is a translational motion he said i have taken you from the dominion and territory of darkness I am taking you by being born again. I am taking you to a realm where the devil has no power. Am I communicating? No matter how powerful a Nigerian army general is, can he go and demonstrate that power in, in Ghana? He just arrives and says, I'm a general from Nigeria. They arrest you first. And he has a pistol. How did you bring it here? And he has a gun. No. He has power, but not in that territory. He has power, but not in that domain. He is licensed to function with any weapon, but not in that country. He has territorial jurisdiction. In his own territory. So God is saying, when you are born again, I took you from the realm where Satan has power. I took you from what we call in the medicine zona from his zona influential from the zone of his influence you don't carry bulldozer to walk on the farm of somebody who is not yours that is not your farmland that revelation is enough to set you free this number one i have been translated i was removed from the realm where Satan can walk. Arm robbers don't mount roadblock for aeroplane. No matter how desperate they are, the aircraft is in the realm that is beyond the reach of robbery operation. Am I communicating at all? Mahoshake pakataka lagagagalabara. Since you were born, have you heard that kidnappers went to White, to White House to look for somebody? Or even ask rock in Nigeria here? Except he dreamed that he died. And he wants to actualize that, that dream. Even as mad as madman is, he doesn't manifest madness on the highway. Trailer is coming. Trailer. Pop, pop, pop. He will run. The devil inside him recognizes the danger. Hey. 
Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice? By that word tonight, you, the, 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 the grip of the devil on your life is over forever. It's over forever. It's over forever. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Say after me, I have been translated to the realm that is beyond the reach of satanic activity. Say, I have been translated to the realm that is beyond the reach of satanic oppression. I have been translated to the realm that is beyond the reach of satanic power. I announce, hear me, the next time they call your name anywhere, it is fire that will appear. Whether it is in a water, fire will appear. Fire will appear. One of our young men, a political person, was trying to contest. And his opponent took his name to have a list. South, south part of his country. Native doctor, witch doctor. After consultation, the witch doctor said, this man is not touchable. Don't try him. He left from there. Went to another native doctor. Witch doctor. That witch doctor told him, he said, that native doctor said, I have two things to tell you. Number one, this man cannot be touched. Number two, don't waste money on Habalis again. That was a good native doctor. He said, don't waste money on any witch doctor. You are wasting money. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not harmable. In Bene Republic, they tried to, in, a, a native doctor tried to call one of our people up inside the calabash. Fire came out and blinded him. The next time they look for you, they are looking for judgment. The next time they invoke your name, anywhere in any realm, they shall experience the judgment of fire. Say the loudest, Amen. Take your seat. Being saved. Staying away from sin. Now, I say that because you are battling with spirit husband. And you are living in immorality. <laughs> that is plus one minus one, zero. You are praying that the devil should not molest you in the dream. And you are molesting yourself in the day. Your prayer is already answered. It continues. You are battling with terrible demonic challenges. And you are still a thief, a liar. It's not workable. So being born again and staying away from anything that opens the door for the devil into your life. Number two, the word. The light of the word. The light of the word of God is a force of liberation. For the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not John chapter 1 verse 5. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. It has lighted upon Israel. Isaiah chapter 9 and in verse 8. When the word comes, light comes. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. When God sends his word, it comes with deliverance power. So we are talking about the sent word. That particular word you caught. That particular rema you caught. That particular revelation you saw. You just saw that revelation. And that became the end. Of your affliction. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loud most amen. The light of the word of God. Number three is the force of 
prayer and fasting. Jacob prayed in Genesis 32 and in verse 24 to 28. And his, the limitation left his life. Limitation left his life. He moved from Jacob to Israel as he wrestled with God. Jabez prayed in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 and 10 until his name changed from sorrowful to honorable. Isaiah chapter 58 and in verse 6 he said, Is this not the fast I have chosen? What will the fasting do? Loose bands of wickedness. Undo the heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. And every yoke be broken. That is the fast that God chooses. It breaks yokes. This kind goeth not out. But by prayer and fasting. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21. Matthew chapter 17 verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not out. But by prayer and fasting. Somebody say aloud, loud amen. One of my loved ones relations from my place. We actually bear the same surname. He told me, he said. I know why the enemy can't locate you at all. That is the enemy of our side. He said you pray too much. You fast too much. It's almost impossible to eat. So I know why they, they, can't, they, can't, they, can't, they can't encroach you. The other day, my wife was laughing at me. Then I said, what's happening? My tummy appears to be coming out small. What is this? I destroy it now. <laughs> so where, 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 what, what, what challenge is that? She said, there is nothing. I said, I can feel something. It was destroyed on the spot. I returned back from America last week and I told my mom, I said, I will not taste anything for, for three days. No food, no physical food. See, I said, why? Well, reasons best known to me. One, fasting. Two, I think I inhale too, I, I consume too much junk. I have to de-junk the system. No, in that place, what they eat there is uh... so. The young man told me, "Say, I know why they they can't catch you. Permanently walking as a mobile bundle of fire. I announce to somebody from today, they can't catch you." That amen is not a good one. I said from today they can't catch you. Listen. It is not every time you see food you must eat. The presence of food is not licensed for eating. You must be ready to eat and willing to eat. There must be appetite to eat. Every time you see food and you don't feel like eating, don't force yourself. And don't let anybody force you. Oh, you came to our house, you gave you something to eat, you don't eat. Okay, package it for me. I'm not ready to eat now. If it is compulsory, that if you don't eat it, ram head cannot enter pot. <laughs> pack, package, package it for me. Package it for me. Am I communicating? There are times God is calling you to prayer and calling you to fasting because he saw danger coming. I told you the story of a young man who was meant to do a fasting and prayer and about one o'clock or two in the day, he smelled good food and broke the fast. You know what happened? And you know food can smell too much when you are fasting. Your sense, your, your, your sense of smell seems to be heightened by fasting. I went to preach somewhere and I'm, I was fasting before I went there. And I wasn't planning to eat even after coming from there. And where they kept me, as if they, 
as if the building material was food. <laughs> the smell of food everywhere. I said, you are wasting your life. You are wasting yourself. It's not food that brought me here. And I have any food I want to eat at home. As I came, so will I go. I wasn't eating before coming. I won't eat after I left here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many people. And this young man was called to the fast. And he broke the fast in the middle of the day. Because he smelled food. And he said, I will continue later. That night, he got an oppression. That he, had, he didn't recover from. From the last time I knew. Close to 20 years. The affliction continued. The Lord saw it ahead. How did Adam and Eve lose their destiny and inheritance by eating something? How did Esau lose his birthright by eating something? Food is good for nourishment, but food can also become a bondage. If those people lost something by food, there is something that may be gained if you disconnect from food, even if it's for a season. Did you get that equation? Somebody say it loud, amen. amen. You don't wait until they say there is church fasting and prayer. You can call up, you can call up a fast at any time. You can call up a fast at any time, any time, any time. Based on how you feel. This kind goeth not out, but by fasting and pray. And there is no fasting anybody can do for you that is as effective as the one you do for yourself. There are those who are saying, oh, uh, I have a group of people praying for me, fasting for me. There's nothing. What you do for yourself counts far more than what anybody can do for you. I prophesy a fresh act climate of prayer. A fresh mantle of intercession. A fresh mantle of prayer and fasting that will break every yoke of hell. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Number four is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is force number four that can pull you out of any limitation. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. He says, as for you also, by the blood of your covenant, I have sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Out of the pit where there is no water. Out of the pit where there is no water. Verse 12. Turn to your stronghold. O oh, you, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto you. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Say amen like you believer. Amen, amen like a believer. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 eh? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. When we are talking about the blood we are talking about the blood you take in communion. Every time communion is presented it is an opportunity to be free. It's an opportunity for liberty. It's an opportunity for satanic embargoes to be lifted. Every time when at the place of prayer you make demands on the blood, the speaking is the voice of the blood to speak against every voice speaking against your life. How many of you know that the blood of Jesus is stronger than the blood of tortoises? It's, it's stronger than the blood of black and white ram. Eh? Whatever they are using against people most places is those kind of things. The blood of Jesus is stronger than that. Somebody say aloud, loud, amen. So what are the forces of liberation? Being born again. The light of the word of God. Force of prayer and fasting. The blood of Jesus. Number five is kingdom service. Let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus chapter 7 verse 16. Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. 7, 16. 8, 1. Exodus 8, 20. Let my people go that they may serve me. 
In Exodus chapter 23 verse 25, you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. He shall bless means he shall delete the curse. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. And when God blesses, no devil can curse. Kingdom service. Moses said, I am a stammerer. God said, go, serve me. And the stammering will die. Serving God destroyed the stammering of Moses. Kingdom service liberated Zechariah. Who's, who was barren along with his wife. While he carried out his duty. The angel visited him. Don't sit in church and do nothing. Don't be an executive Christian. Be involved in kingdom service. Ensure you do something. And if you are doing something and the devil said, your, your change has still not come, continue for as long as it takes to see change. Every true servant of God here, every church worker, workforce, any area of work you are committed in, I prophesy today by the covenant of service, your liberty is confirmed now. Anti-marital spell is broken right now. Anti-marital spell is broken right now. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Number six is warfare praise. Praise is a tool. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26, as midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all doors were open. Everyone's bands were loosed. Psalm 32 and in verse 7. He said, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. And you shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Somebody say aloud, Amen. In a short while to come, we shall dance. And in the middle of that dance, ay, 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 ay. somebody first give the king of kings and the lord of lords a 60 second shout of victory. 60 second shout of victory. 60 second shout of victory. Shout! Shout! Somebody give him another shout of victory. Give the Lord a bigger shout of victory. I got to know many years ago that it is not possible for me to lose my feet in the dance and any devil can tie it in bondage. It's not possible for me to lift my hand in praise and any devil can tie me down. Psalm 149 and in verse 6 he said let's start from verse 4 for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And when the high praise of God is in their mouth, a two-edged sword is in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the hidden. And punishments upon the people. Somebody say, God punish the devil and his agents to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his sins praise you the lord somebody give the lord another shout of victory
those who walk, those who live in praise cannot live in the prison. If you doubt me, ask Paul and Silas. Those who live in praise cannot live in the prison. The reason why you see some of us move about and someone told me, say, it looks like you are happy all the time. Those who live in praise, they can't live in the prison. The majority of my problem is other people's issues. My own. That is, what is your problem? Other people's issues. Let this one get married. Let this one get her children. Let this one get this. They may... 89.99 Those who live in praise cannot live in the prison. If you understand the power of praise, you won't stand like standard bank when praise is on. If you understand the power of praise, you will do it by yourself in your house even when the drum is not beating. One day my children walked into the room and saw me and my wife dancing in the bedroom. <laughs> you saw us dancing. Dancing with sweat. Anything you see here physically at the airport, I was tempted to move my shoulder and body. Until I have to investigate. What music is it? I told my wife, I said, if you don't want my body to shake, don't beat drum. <laughs> the dead body. I went to our school, that's the Christian Academy the other day. They were doing much, doing tick, 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 you know the the kind of, um, is it match pass kind of drum they are beating? And then my own was dance. Get, get, get. I have to use it to praise. Just, it, it, it did there. Am I communicating? May God give you the spirit of David. The praise spirit. The praise. That, that danceable spirit. That praiseable spirit. In the name of Jesus, the capacity to live in praise so you don't live in the prison. You believe that? Shout, Yes, I receive it. Shout, shout, shout if you are shouting. If you are shouting, shout it loudest. Take your seat. I have two more forces and we shall rise up. Are you ready for the warfare praise? The praisers can start getting ready because after I finish preaching, we'll step into that one straight. Number one, number seven is the force of sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving. In Genesis chapter 80, and in, sorry, Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. That's right. As I'm talking now, the Lord is giving people direction. Now, now. Go forward. And the Lord smelt a, a, a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore. Everything living as I have done. That is, by this sacrifice, I take the curse from the earth. I take the curse from the earth. 
No wonder I said in Psalm 126 from verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears. That is sacrifice. Sowing in tears. is a captivity turnaround factor. Am I communicating? Lord, this is all I have right now. I lay it on the altar. But I don't want to remain in this situation for the rest of my life. Above the climate seed that people are sowing in this season change so many people's lives. I don't have the time to share many testimonies about people whose destinies completely turned. People have sown sacrificially on behalf of children that are at the back of the class shifted to the front. Sacrificially concerning Husbands, life that is battered and scattered and upside down. Or a robot at the age of 75. He was 75 years old. In this part of the world, we think that somebody of that age is old enough to die. He had massive heart attack. He told his wife, empty my bank account. Take the money to God. And tell him I don't want to die yet. The wife took the money to God. Heart returned back to normal. He lived to 75, 76, 77, 78, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91 from 75. John Davis in Rockefeller was dying in his 40s at the age of 54. Gave his takes, half of his takes out. And then continued living for 50 something more years. The power of sacrifice. It has the capacity to terminate captivities. If there is any current sacrifice you are aware of that is on, dive in if there is none call it for yourself this is my sacrifice this year can't end like that adversity must turn captivity must turn something is happening for somebody here and I announce to someone sacrifices of yesterday shall begin to answer for you today and the ones you are about to do right now shall begin to answer for you right now if you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. If you are saying amen, shout a louder believer, say amen. Have you gotten anything at all? Number eight is the force of prophetic release. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt by a prophet. Or see preserved. Egypt means captivity. Your prophet brings you out of your captivity and assists you into your destiny. When you believe in them, when you agree to take the steps that they outlined for you. Silver and gold, Peter said to the man at the beautiful gate, I have none. But this thing that followed you from the womb of your mother. Because the man was crippled from the womb. Such as I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And he put hand in the man's hand. That is called impartation. And jacked him up. And his feet and ankle bones. Received strength. I stand here today. By the same 
prophetic and apostolic mantle that has delivered people all around the world, that mantle is setting you free now. You know, this mantle has no geographical boundary. Last week in Chicago, praying and people are having encounters under the anointing everywhere. White woman, Caucasian, stood up from the ground, came forward. What happened to you? She said, she fell under power and a snake left her head. Snake. I say this snake is not only in Africa. Stand up on your feet. That is the universality of captivity. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? That woman came up from the ground free of the snakeous torment that held her for years. Today is your day. Amen. I'd like you to insist on freedom tonight. Father, I believe. Please be upstanding. Musicians, position yourself. Somebody lift your hand and say, tonight is my night. How many of you received the word today? And how many of you in your life that word shined light? And the darkness comprehended it not. Can you shine your light right now? Let's start with that before we step into praise. Shine your light right now. Your touch light. Your full light. This is the right time to put the light on. I see some people are still sitting. Counselors, if you are sitting, what will the normal people do? Wave. Wave. And say after me, say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. My light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon my life. Say it, my light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen. Is anybody shining that light on the second gallery? Lift it high. My light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Wave it and just begin to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. My light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. My light has come. The glory. Leave that light up in the name of Jesus. Lift it up before we enter into praise. What is going to happen tonight? Now, when, I, when you hear anything and you think it's going to be profitable to you, I would like you to, all you need to say is amen at the top of your voice. As we step into praise and proceed from praise into covenant renouncement, everything that is called an ancestral or a generational curse shall be broken by fire. family cycle family pattern you notice the cycle you notice a pattern in your family as we step into praise and step into prayer and covenant renouncement the pattern shall be broken every occultic manipulation 
a man or a woman is in the occult and they are trying to manipulate you or maybe your father or your mother your destiny today the manipulations will be broken every power of witchcraft you are dealing with witchcraft witches or wizards as we step into praise and prophetic operations the witchcraft power shall be broken every work of native doctors charms and magical powers arrayed against you or your loved ones or against this commission in a moment from now beginning from now they shall be rendered powerless every marine or water spirit influence today is their terminal date every spirit of leviathan serpentine spirits today shall be their terminal date every spiritual relationship as a spirit husband spirit wife spirit children today they shall be roasted by fire altars on the earth they shall be roasted by fire altars under the earth they shall be destroyed by fire altars on the trees shall be destroyed by fire altars in the grave leave that light up in the grave a young man shared the revelation he saw how God took him to his village and showed him the strongest woman in the wicked kingdom he said deal with this woman God said to her witches fear her and wizards that her own power is from the grave of her children. Aye, aye, aye. Wicked. Wicked. Killed her children to get dreaded power to use it to do what? Every such altar, wherever they are, fighting your life and fighting your destiny. Every such altar, tonight their power shall die. Altars in the fire in the waters, altars in the forests, altars in the heavenlies. Sha -sha. Tonight shall be their obituary. So shall it be. We shall be celebrating victory celebration in the next five minutes this is a very strategic time after that next seven minutes after that we go into covenant renouncements after that power ministrations while this moment is on if you knew you were meant to come out for the first altar call and you didn't come and you know your life is not in order with god while the dance is on just dance your way forward so that this night does not pass you by so that whatever must be broken in your life must be broken tonight let's go in celebration you can off your light now so that the batteries does not die let's celebrate the king of kings wave your hands celebrate for the next seven minutes
hallelujah eh? is the sound of victory hallelujah eh? hallelujah oh let the sound of rejoicing fill the sun hallelujah hallelujah eh? wait if there is a jericho wall before you and you want it to fall now how will you dance if the enemy had kept your enemy in the prison and you want that prison door to open for you to come out how will you dance if you were in the belly of the fish like Jonah how will you celebrate <laughs> I like you to dance tonight like fight. Dance like one woman was dancing like she was fighting. And somebody said to her, Madam, you be soldier. She was trusting God for the fruit of the womb for years. She danced like it was a fight. Baroness died. Lift your hands and say, Father. Father. Say it after me. Say, Father, I receive the grace to celebrate you. I am in warfare praise. 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 I am in victory praise. Father, after this praise warfare, I shall step into victory today. After this warfare praise, I shall step into victory today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray one minute. In the name of Jesus.